just over a month ago, I had hands down the worst experience hiking that I've ever had. Um, and I'm going to tell that story in this video. The thing that happened itself was super scary, but honestly, the scariest part about it for me is just thinking about how it could have easily been so much worse than it was. And it was already so bad. It just like, it's really scary to think about that. And I want you guys to think about that too. When I tell this story and, um, I think there's some things that we can learn from it. Some, the message here might sound similar to like the message I include in a lot of my main channel videos, which I promise trail tales is going to be back to normal. Um, after this episode, like it's not going to become like a really serious, like tragedy thing, but, um, I don't know, dude, this is a real story that like it, it just happened in it. And this story also explains why the show has been kind of absent, ab absent over the past month as well. And so without further ado, um, I'm going to start by telling you guys a little bit about my girlfriend and I'm also going to describe like some details about the hike that day that might not seem that important, but you'll understand why I'm telling you them very shortly. And so my girlfriend, Leela, she's not an internet person like me. Like she doesn't have public social media. And so that's the reason why she's never been in a video. I don't really talk about her very often. We both kind of, like she doesn't really want to be in the videos and I don't really want her to either, to be honest. It's nice to have those like personal like relationships and stuff like separate from your content. Like not that there's anything wrong with people who like couples who make videos together or anything, but like not something I'm really interested in and not something she's really interested in either. Maybe someday if we do like a through hike together or something, but you know, for now, certainly, you know, she's not public. Um, but this story involves her. And so for that reason, that's why I'm telling you about her. Um, on March 3rd, 2024, we went on a very, what was supposed to be a very short and easy hike together here in Hawaii. We were up on the North shore of Oahu. I don't remember the name of the trail, but this was not a well-known or notorious dangerous trail or anything. I do remember that this trail system that we were on was actually not just for hiking, but also for like mountain biking as well. And I think that illustrates that this is not like super remote dangerous, unmaintained, crazy trails, which there are a lot of those in Hawaii. Um, and we actually, <laughs> it's kind of ironic. We've actually gone out of our way to avoid those trails because neither one of us like them. There's just a lot of trails here that, yeah, they're just like not really official trails they are unmaintained and they still get enough foot traffic that like there is still a trail there, but it's like dangerous. And there's like a lot of cliffs and loose soil and you know, we've done a couple trails like that and we're just like, nah, <laughs> we're not interested. So the, I guess it's really ironic um, as I get further into the story that we were going out of our way to avoid those kinds of trails. But anyways, um, I'm trying to illustrate that the trail we chose was a very chill trail. This was not the kind of trail where you would expect something to go wrong. It was certainly the kind of trail that was well within our abilities. And um, the I think it had rained a little bit the night before, and so it was just a little bit slick, but it wasn't like it wasn't like a sheet of ice. It wasn't anything like super dangerous. Like I've hiked on trails this slippery or way more slippery than this tons of times and never even thought twice about it. Never in my head was like, oh my God, this is so dangerous. It's too slippery. Like, yeah, it was a little bit slick, but it it, it was fine. There was plenty of other people hiking this trail this day. There was a guy running actually that we saw that's going to be a part of the story in a second. So I'm just trying to illustrate like conditions were perfectly normal. Nothing that anybody who's an experienced hiker or even an inexperienced hiker for that matter would even think twice about as far as the shoes that she was wearing. Um, she was wearing Hoka speed goats. They weren't brand brand new. They were relatively new. And the reason I'm, I'm saying that is because, you know, when a shoe is brand new, you know, it can be a little weird. You might lose your balance easier on it. Um, or if a shoe's really worn out, then, 
you know, it's not going to provide as much protection or the tread might be worn out. So you might be more apt to slip. And I, so I'm telling you, like her shoes were really in like a pretty prime condition, not brand new. They were broken in, but they also weren't so worn in that they were like, you know, like the tread was gone or anything like that. Um, as far as her hiking experience and abilities, she's never done like a long, long through hike like I have and many of you have. Uh, but she's not an, she's not a beginner hiker either. She's not a novice hiker. She's backpacked before. She's done plenty of day hikes and stuff. Um, this hike that we were doing was literally supposed to be like a, I don't know, maybe an hour or two hike, probably like a two hour, like really easy loop. I think it was like a thousand feet of elevation gain. That's it. Like it, we were just going to go do this quick hike and then we were going to go to the beach and like get like a lunch or something. It was, it was literally like supposed to be the most like nonchalant, like, um, it, well within her abilities, she's in great shape. So it's not like she didn't have any business being out on the trail. And so I guess that's the, the background and, and you'll understand again why I'm telling you that stuff in a second. And so we drive to the trailhead and, and the way this trail is you park, it's like kind of in a, <clears throat> it's kind of in like a neighborhood. And so you like park in this neighborhood and then you walk about 50 yards down somebody's driveway actually. And then you leave their driveway and go through a little gate and that's where the woods start. And so we walked, we parked, we walked down the driveway, we entered the woods and then there was like a couple signs there. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, we're literally, we had just entered the woods at this point. We could still like see the, the driveway. We we're probably 50, 60 yards away from our car. And we entered the woods, there's some signs. So we stopped to read these signs and stuff. And then I got, you know, I was probably like 10 or 15 feet away from her. And we're like, okay, cool. So we start walking down the trail. Finally, we literally took three or four steps and dude, she just, I, 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 she was behind me, so I didn't actually see it, but something happened where she just slipped and lost her balance. And just the way that she landed for some weird reason, she broke, she broke the shit out of her leg. She broke. Well, actually, Disclaimer, I'm not going to get like super detailed and gory here or anything, but I am going to describe her injury a little bit. So if you're at all sensitive to that, then maybe skip the next like 30 seconds to a minute or the video entirely. I'm not going to get like, you know, super graphic, but she just slipped and her left leg just like broke. She hasn't had any issues with broken bones before. There was no reason to believe that she was susceptible to this. But she broke, um, is it fibia and tibia, tibula, fibula, the two bones like kind of near your ankle, like right here and here. She clean break on both those bones and she also broke uh, part of her ankle as well. She just slipped and she just goes down and she starts screaming and stuff, obviously. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I turn around. And okay, another warning. This is probably the most graphic. It's not. It's not that bad. But this is probably the most graphic part. You good? Okay. Um, thankfully, the bones didn't break through her skin, and so her bone wasn't like sticking out of her leg. She wasn't bleeding, but I mean, she completely broke both those bones in her leg, and so her foot was like kind of dangling off her leg. Thank God it wasn't. The bone wasn't sticking out or anything, but I mean, just like a very very serious traumatic injury and so she obviously can't walk on it actually right as this happened there was another guy that was trail running actually coming up the trail towards us and so me and this other guy we like we were so close to the car still like we had literally just started this hike dude it's so crazy and i'm going to talk about this more in a second but how lucky i mean unlucky but also lucky we were and how much worse it could have been um and so me and this guy, we're so close to the car, like me and this guy, like we picked her up and we literally carried her back to the car. We carried her the 50, 60 yards back up the driveway to the car. And then, you know, Oahu is a very populated island. And so it's not like we were, you know, an hour down a dirt forest service road and then you know, finally you hit the pavement and then you're still another hour to the nearest town from there. Like, you know, we were Google maps 20 minutes from the nearest emergency room, right from where the car was parked. And so 
I freaking drove her there. <laughs> and I'll tell the rest of the, the hospital story in the aftermath and stuff in a second, but um, she's okay. I guess I should just, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to clickbait you in regards to that. Like she's okay and she's going to be okay. But like, I'll tell the rest of those details in a second, but I mean, it was just awful, dude. Like she was in so much pain. Like as soon as she went down, she was just screaming. Like I said, her foot was kind of hanging off like that and just like brutal. And, um, we were literally 60 yards from the car when this happened. And this is the part that really gets me because on one hand, we were so lucky. Like, thank God that we were so close because if we had been even just like a half mile or a mile down the trail, this could have been so much, so much worse. And, and this is really what I kind of want to harp on here. And, and this is also where I think there's just like a really big lesson. Well, actually, also, so you might be wondering why this happened. I don't know. She doesn't know. Nobody knows. Like, this is probably one of the scariest. This is the scariest part about this whole situation is... And this is also why I went over like her footwear and her physical abilities and like the trail conditions and stuff, because, you know, I feel like when accidents like serious accidents like this happen on trail, especially, you know, I've learned this from doing all these videos on the Kyle Hates Hiking channel over the past year, like almost always there's a either very obvious reason why it happened or there's like you know, you can kind of like infer why it happened. Like there's usually some, some, there's usually a reason, right? You know, somebody was in over their head. They, they weren't physically prepared for the type of terrain they were hiking on and they had an accident because of it or gear wise, they weren't prepared. They had bad footwear or the trail conditions were obviously really dangerous and they went anyways and they had an accident as a result, but that was not the case for this situation. And it's so, it's just, it's freaky dude, because like you want there to be a reason for why this happened, but she had good footwear. The trail conditions were well within what any reasonable hiker would assume, or the trail conditions were well within what any reasonable hiker would think was a, was normal. Like, like I said, it was a little bit slippery and that's probably why she slipped, but it wasn't that slippery. Like I'm, I guarantee you every single one of you that's ever hiked anything in your life you've gone on trails that were as slippery or more slippery than this. Like I said, there was people running out there. There's people biking. It was a little bit slippery, but completely normal. We were at the very beginning of the hike too. And so it's not like she was extra tired and more susceptible to something like this. And, um, after, you know, she went to the hospital and stuff, they did, they tested her blood and her bone density or whatever they do and like her bones were normal it was just a freak accident is basically what i'm getting at and trust me i've you could probably tell like i've tried to find a reason for this happening and she has too and like there is none it's just a freak accident and it's so scary because it could have happened to anybody and it could have happened anywhere and so anyways let me get back to that if we had been even a mile into the trail this would have been like a whole it just would have been so much worse, right? Because I guess I could have tried to carry her out for a mile, but like that probably wouldn't be very safe or smart. Realistically, probably what would have happened is if we were further in, she probably would have had to just lay there in pain for however long it took for rescuers to get there, which, you know, I don't know how long it would have taken. Um, I'm sure it would have been like at least an hour, pr probably longer. Who knows? She would have just had to lay there um, because I mean, Dude, we were so lucky. She was in the emergency room getting pain meds, getting stabilized, getting x-rays, getting treated maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes after it happened. I mean, it was so fast, like such a quick turnaround. We were able to get her, get her help. But like that wouldn't have been the case if she was further in. And that just scares the shit out of me. I know I'm just rambling at this point. <sighs> I just feel like there was nothing that could have been done to prevent this. It was just a freak thing. And we just got lucky that we were so close to the car. And so I, I gave the example there of what if we were a mile in, what if we were doing like a really remote trail? What if we were like, I mean, even parts of like the PCT, you're like super, super far in there. You know, you're miles and miles from the nearest trailhead, which might be miles on a forest service road to the nearest paved road, which is then miles 
to the nearest town and that's a small town that doesn't really have a hospital, you know, you could be hours away from the nearest emergency room. And, you know, what if it had been something like that when this happened? There seems like there was no way to prevent it. It was just a freak thing. So like it could have happened anywhere in theory, which means it could have happened in a really shitty spot like that. Or even worse, what if she was by herself when this happened? She doesn't really do solo hiking, but like this could have happened to anybody. It could happen to me. So like, or you, what if me or you were hiking by yourself in a really remote area when this happened? And it's like, you go down, there's no walking on this foot. There's no way you can get yourself out. Zero chance. So if that happened and you were in a really remote area, the only hope you would have is either you had cell service and you could call for help or somebody found you. Now, if you were on a trail like the PCT or the AT or something like that, chances are somebody probably would come by, you know, assuming you're in normal hiking season. It might take hours, but eventually probably someone's going to find you and be able to go summon help. It still would be hours and hours and hours, maybe even a day before they would finally get to you like the help would. But what if you were on a trail that doesn't get that much use? I mean, there's tons of trails out West. Or what if you were off trail um, bushwhacking or like, you know, route finding and something like by yourself and something like this happens. Your only hope at that point is that you can call for help. And what if you didn't have cell service? Your only hope at that point is if you had a Garmin or a satellite GPS that has an SOS button, that would have been your only hope. I mean, maybe someone would have found you eventually, but it could be days. I mean, there's trails, plenty of trails out there in these really remote areas that probably don't get hiked for like weeks at a time. Imagine that you're just, you you don't have cell service. You don't have a GPS, uh, a satellite phone, whatever, um, satellite GPS with an SOS button, personal locator beacon. You don't have one of these devices you're screwed. You're probably going to die. Or at the very least, you're probably going to lose your leg or your foot. I I was going to say the biggest lesson here is I really just think it's so important for people to carry personal locator beacons. And, And if you don't, I'm not judging you. I'm not, I don't think you're dumb. I don't think you're stupid. I don't think you're reckless even because as most of you guys probably know, I never carried one of those until the past year. I mean, I did the entire AT without one, the entire PCT without one. I've done you know, in those trails, again, realistically, if something were to go wrong, you'd probably have somebody that would help you because those trails are so well trafficked during through hiker season. But like I've done remote trails in like the White Mountains by myself, for instance, without a, a personal locator beacon. And if some if something freak like this had happened on those trails, I've done a couple trails in the whites where like it probably would have been days before somebody came by. Like if I was incapacitated, I couldn't walk like that. Like, dude, who knows? So I really I really think you ought to consider bringing one of these if you do a lot of hiking, especially by yourself in remote areas. And again, I'm not judging you. I didn't get one because, number one, freak accidents like this are extremely rare. And so I'm also not trying to scare you either. Like, they're extremely rare, but also... The fact that it happened right in front of me, one of these freak accidents happened right in front of me now, it's got me like thinking like, oh shit, these, it's it's easy to kind of block that stuff out when it doesn't happen to you or to somebody you know, you like, you read about it or whatever, you hear about it in a video or a podcast, but you're like, ah, that's so rare, like, it's not going to happen to me. And that's honestly a little bit how I felt until this past month when it did happen right in front of me. If you don't want if you don't carry one of these, like, I get it chances are you're not going to need it. I'm not going to sugarcoat that either and tell you like, you're definitely going to need it. Like you probably won't need it. Um, Also, you're probably a safe hiker who mitigates risk. That was really how I justified it the most in my head before I got one. I was like, I don't need it because I don't take unnecessary risks. I'm experienced. I'm competent. I've never had a situation where I even came close to needing it. So like I get that. And then also the cost, that was another big reason why I didn't get it was I just didn't want to pay for it. I figured I, the chances of needing it were so slim that I just didn't, it wasn't worth paying for. Um, and so like, if you don't carry one, I get it. Like, seriously, I'm, I'm not trying to judge. I'm not trying to like shame you or anything, but, um, oh man, I just think you should get one. I think you should really consider it because like I said, if she had been by herself in a remote area, and without cell service, which 
chances are she would have been without cell service if she was in a remote area. She would have been totally screwed if she didn't have one of these. Um, and so that's like the biggest thing that I've taken away from this is just like, oh, just how much worse it could have been. And thank God it wasn't because it was already so, so shitty. And I was still able to able to get her to a hospital less than an hour after it happened. Like imagine if it had been like hours or, or days before she was able to finally get help. Like, but anyways, something to think about. And, and then the rest of this story isn't really hiking related, but I'm sure some people are probably curious at this point. So in terms of like what ended up happening afterwards, I took her to the ER. It's just like a small hospital up on the very northern part of Hawaii or of Oahu. I forget the name of the town there. It's up by the BYU campus. Um, took her to a small hospital there. When the nurse first came out, you know, I I drove right up to the door. I walked in. I was like, "Hey, she broke her leg." And you know, when the first when the nurse first came out, I think that I'm just guessing here. I don't know for sure, but he seemed not very urgent or eager. Maybe not eager. That's not fair. I, I don't want to say that. He didn't seem very urgent. He was kind of taking his time. I was like, you know, I, I said like, thank you or whatever. He didn't really say anything back to me. I think I'm guessing here. I think that he had probably seen. And the only reason I think this too is because I have a couple of really good friends that work in emergency rooms. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking that he probably, especially with a small hospital up there, they probably don't get that many people. And I feel like when they do, maybe some of them don't actually need to be at the ER. Um, and so maybe he had experiences in the past where someone comes in like, Oh, they broke whatever. And then they look at it and it's really not that bad. And so I think he might've just assumed that was the case here. So he kind of comes out with a wheelchair or whatever. And then when he actually looked at her leg and saw, he, he like perked up instantly. He was like, Oh shit. Like this is a very serious injury. And so him and the rest of the doctors there at that emergency room were, were great. They got her stabilized x-rays, whatever. And as soon as they took the x-rays, they were like, yeah, you're going to need surgery. And they were like, I think, you know, they kept her in the hospital for a few hours, you know, until some of her pain calmed down a little bit. And then they were like, okay, she's going to need surgery, but it's too swollen right now. They were like, we're going to discharge her and, you know, call the bigger hospital here in Honolulu where we live, level one trauma center. I think the only one in the state and like, you know, it's the top hospital in the state. And so, and we live very close to it, like, you know, easy drive to it, super close. And so it worked out, that worked out well. They were like, yeah, call them, make an appointment for surgery, maybe in like a couple of days or a week or whatever, when the swelling goes down, then you can get the surgery. But they also said if the pain gets worse or it doesn't go down or it's unbearable, like go to the emergency room there. And so we were like, okay, brought her home, probably got home. She, she, the accident happened at probably about 10 a.m., we probably got home around 4 p.m. after the hospital stay and the driving and everything. She wasn't able to sleep. She was in so much pain. And so eventually at about 1 a.m. So, you know, the accident happened on March 3rd, I believe. So 1 a.m. on March 4th, we made the call. We were like, you know what? We got to go back to the ER. And so I took her back to the ER, thankfully so close to our house. And, and at about 5 p.m. on March 4th, they finally took her in for surgery. Thankfully, the surgery went really well. She should be making a full recovery. She's still on crutches even to this day. She is starting to learn to walk again a little bit now, but she's got a lot of progress to go. But um, she's certainly not in as much pain as she was before and after the surgery. And she is getting better. Thank God that's the case. But like, man, I know I'm sure that a lot of you have had people that you love, people that you're close to have like, awful things happen like this or pass away perhaps. And so I'm sure a lot of you can kind of understand. Um, and also like, obviously she didn't die and she's just not going to even be permanently injured. So like, she, I'm, we're both very grateful for that. And so I, I, I'm very, trust me, I'm very aware that it could have been worse. Like, trust me, I've obviously spent a lot of time thinking about how it could have been worse. This is the reason why the show hasn't been very consistent over the last month. Basically after this happened, there was just a lot of adjustment. I needed to catch up on a lot of rests because I was up for like almost 40 hours straight and her parents were here. And so they were staying with us helping. And I just, I basically ended up taking like a full week off of work and um, I just fell super far behind and um, trail tales doesn't really pay the bills. My main channel does. And so 
I had to prioritize that when I did finally get back to work because I just like, I got to keep the lights on. I think you could probably understand like after getting really far behind on work, I had to prioritize the other channel for the moment, but I'm finally caught up now. And so that's why Trail Tales is coming back. Um, and there might be a little bit of inconsistencies over the next few months, but I do have some really fun stuff planned. Some fun, like actually fun, like no, no more episodes like this. Like I'm not going to keep harping on this or whatever. Um, we'll be back, we'll be back to fun next week. Syntax 77 is going to be my guest next week. We're actually about to record after this. And so the show is going back to normal. And so thank you guys for listening to this. Um, I'm sorry to be such a bummer, but like because of like how much worse it could have been and, and because of the lesson, I think in terms of like carrying an SOS, a, G, a satellite GPS, I and because of the fact that I do have this platform, I just felt like I felt like I had to tell this story. Like I really felt like there was a lot to learn f- for you guys and um, she agreed. And so that's why I'm telling it. Thank you for your patience over the last few months and thank you for tuning back in now that the show is going to be up and going again. And then trail days, Appalachian trail, trail days, uh, May 17th through the 19th, I believe in Damascus, Virginia. If you're going to trail days, leave a comment and let me know. The reason I keep asking you guys to let me know about this is because I want to gauge like how many listeners are like for sure going to be there because I might try to plan like a informal meetup. I'm not going to like reserve a room or have like an official meetup. It's just where I have like, you know, it's just going to be like, hey, let's all meet at this bar and just hang out with Trail Tales listeners. And of course, I love to meet you guys as well. Um, so if you're going to Trail Days, let me know in the comments, like for sure you're going. And then I've already, and, and thank you if you already did, by the way, I've, I've been seeing those comments and it looks like a decent amount of people are. And so we'll probably do something, maybe try to meet up at like a brewery or one of the vendor tents or something during the day. Um, if I can agree to have a vendor, let me do that. I've got some... <laughs> I've got some connections. Yeah, uh, that was sarcasm, but I do actually personally know a few people that are going to have tents there, so we'll see. Um, so yeah, if that's something you're interested in. And thank you guys. I love this. I love doing this show, dude. I'm never going to stop this show, even if it's not like, you know, paying the bills right now. I mean, it never has to be honest. I don't really get, I don't really make very much money from Trail Tales, to be honest, but that's not really the point. Um, and so like, just thank you guys for for bearing with me and, and wish Lila the best. And uh, she's going to be okay. Thank God. And I'll see you next week with uh, Syntax 77. Thank you guys. Sorry to be such a bummer in this one.